So let's wait a few more minutes for the other persons could I have.
مثلا Good morning everyone Thank you all for coming to our workshop IPv6 Independence Day Rest in Peace IPv4 We are very grateful to IGF for this opportunity to discuss the future of the internet Also I would like to thank the panelists for accepting our invitation and nic.vr and cgi.br for supporting us in our research. Well, my name is Eduardo Barazal Morales, and I am the coordinator of the Autonomous System Training Area at nic.br. And here, I will be the moderator for this round table. We will also have my colleague, Thiago Jun Nakamura, moderating the online participation. So let me introduce our six panelists. First, we will listen to Ms. Berger from the German government. Then we will have Mr. Moreiras from the Brazilian technical community, followed by Mr. Susi, who will represent the French government. Next, Mr. Tamon will bring us the African technical community's view. And finally, we will have two remote panelists. Mr. Legree from the Moroccan Civil Society, and Mr. Howard from the American private sector. So this is how we have planned this round table. I will start with a short introduction to the theme. Then each panelist will have up to 10 minutes to present their points of view. After that, we will have 20 minutes for the panelists to debate among themselves, as well with the audience, through the open microphone. And we will finish with wrap up and conclusions. So let's start our introduction. Currently, we have two versions of the internet protocol. Version 4, or IPv4, which has address exhaustion issues, and version 6, or IPv6 which is the newer version developed to substitute IPv4. However, even though IPv6 has been around for 20 years, its usage is still very low. And that's what this graph made by Google shows. The green line represents the percentage of a user that access Google over IPv6. And as you can see, only 30% of this traffic is running over IPv6. This means that 70% is still using IPv4. So looking at this graph and knowing that Google is a huge internet company, it would probably be safe to infer that most of the internet traffic is still running the old version IPv4. However, IPv4 days are numbered, as the other graph shows. The different line shows the number of IPv4 addresses left in each region of the world. As you can see, all the regions are suffering from IPv4 exhaustion. Probably in less than two years, there will be no more IPv4 address left to be assigned. So we will need to migrate to IPv6 soon if you want to guarantee the stability of the internet. And we are here to discuss how and when the preparation for this transition can be done. So here are three policy questions to guide our discussion. First, when would the ideal time be to transition from IPv4 to IPv6? Second, what role would each stakeholder play in that transition? And third, how can we plan this transition without affecting internet governance principles, taking into account security, stability, and resilience of the internet? So now we are going to hear our specialists. We will start with Ms. Berger, so please. Good morning, everyone. 
Let me introduce myself. Yes. Um, I'm working for the Ministry of the Interior in Germany um, for years, and um, I care about the um, deployment of IBV6 since 10, 12 years. <laughs> this is a big issue in uh, the public administration of Germany. And let me mention um, one thing first. In my opinion, we do need more attention for the theme or for the topic of infrastructure development. Um, all applications, services need reliable um, infrastructure and networks, and these topics um, need more awareness in the IGF and in the discussion, in the political discussion, and so I want to introduce our IBV6 and IBV4 strategy of the public administration of Germany. Our strategy for the usage of IBV6 and IBV4 um, in the public administration has many point of views. Public administration has to provide its IT services for everyone who needs access to the service in Germany themselves and abroad. Um, we have to implement and to provide these services without discrimination against any part of the society. Our goal, goal is maximum accessibility. And one next goal is to introduce IPv6 only and get rid of IPv4, but not everywhere. IPv4 is disabling, must not lead to a digital divide. After the German constitution, um, we grant federal independence for authorities. Therefore, my opinion or our opinion is to implement IBV6 is not, not just to switch on IBV6 and to switch off IBV4. We have to uh, mention and to aware a lot of other themes um, we have to care about. How to put the V6, V4 strategy into action? The public administration has to lead by example. Activities to support the introduction of V6 in the German public administration are we run a local internet registry, including um, special organization. In case of the federal um, state, our constitutional rights, uh, we set, set up a um, sub-LAR structure. Uh, so is every organization able to um, do their own um, technical um, implementation. Uh, after a framework, we discuss in a multi-stakeholder issue. We have a slash 23 IPv6 address space, and we have a corresponding address plan. We set up a public administration information network, and we launch an IPv6 master plan for the federal public administration. First, I can introduce a short view to the um, LAR. We're running this local internet registry, um, common with our provider, that's the uh, BDBOS. It's our operative part of the LRL, and the strategic part is uh, in the ministry themselves. Um, we um, provide every sub LRL address space for uh, running their in IT infrastructures. We separated our uh, address plan after federal states and the federal government, and you can see this just an overview how we implemented our address plan. As a very interesting and new subject <coughs> in our digitization program, we are going to set up our public administration information network. In 
our opinion, network infrastructures are essential for the public administration. We need strong security and high availability for all use levels. Uh, in the moment, we consolidate networks um, to respond to the threat level, to prevent future attacks, to create transparency and reduce complexity. The next step, an important step, is to enable the federal infrastructure and we set up an IPv6 master plan with ad hoc activities, with a migration strategy, um, with mi mi we, we figured out migration areas and we uh, um, do a lot of things around security and procurement issues. This master plan we set up, the federal infrastructure, is not only with the focus on infrastructure themes. We also have to mention that the uh, human resources, the skills, the knowledge, the training, but also the contracts and procurement issues are very important to set up the uh, infrastructure issues. This all is with our view to, to set up these new things. And I want to hear your um, response to our uh, way forward to implement IBV6, and I'm happy to hear your comments. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, Ms. Berger. Then we will have Mr. Moreiras from the Brazilian technical community. Good morning. Greetings, everyone. Uh, it's very good to see you here. And it's good to see you interested in IPv6. Not everyone can see the importance of IPv6 yet, as you see. Uh, I said that yesterday, the IGF network, I mean the Wi-Fi network we are using, the internet connectivity that we have here is limited since we do not have IPv6 connectivity. This is totally unexpected in the Internet Governance Forum network, and it is really, really a shame. The IPv6 network you can see in this room, as far as I know, is not provided by IGF organization, but by a highly enthusiastic person in this same room. I don't know who. Yeah, you? No. <laughs> well, I want to talk about IPv6 transition. I remember about 10 years ago, there was a discussion uh, regarding if we should talk about IPv6 transition or IPv6 deployment. And then, it was mostly agreed that we should call it IPv6 deployment. Because in those distant days, the level of understanding about IPv6 was so low by network <coughs> operators that some of them could think they should turn off IPv4 immediately at the same time they were deploying IPv6, and it would be a complete disaster. So, the word deployment starts to be used because it was better to teach the network operators what they should do in the short term. And I ask, and now, uh, did, you, did we forget that we are really in a transition to IPv6? Did we forget that keep IPv4 working 
Adin Nat, Adin Tsiji Nat. All this was part of a strategy in the way to an IPv6 only internet. Did you forget that? Uh, or are we not talking of a transition anymore? IPv4 and IPv6 maybe are going to coexist forever and ever. Well, for the Internet Architecture Board, it seems to be clear. In a statement made in 2016, uh, IAB says, the IAB expects that the IETF will stop requiring IPv4 compa compatibility in new or extended protocols. Future IETF protocol work will then optimize for and depend on IPv6. We recommend that all networking standards assume the use of IPv6 and be written so they do not require IPv4. We encourage the industry to develop strategies for IPv6, IPv6 only operation. So, according to Internet Architecture Board, um, our goal is still an IPv6 only internet. But I, I think it's not clear for all the people involved anymore. In preparation to this panel, we organized, uh, organized a survey among ISPs in Brazil, asking some questions about the transition. We had uh, 116 responses, and one of our questions was if IPv4 would be turned off in the internet, specifically in BGP routing system someday. About 40% said no. The main justification is the legacy equipment. 40% of the Brazilian ISPs, according to our survey, do not think we will be able to solve the problem of legacy equipment. So IPv4 will be present forever in the internet. We also see a growing, mark for, a growing market for IPv4 addresses. This marketing is succeeding in bringing to the routing table addresses that before were not being used. The recovering process of the RIRs was not so successful in the same task. But this marketing, this market, is also lowering the pressure to IPv6 deploying. It is slowing down IPv6 adoption, or it could be at least. Uh, at least. I think the IPv4 market can be good at short term for ISPs, companies, the economy, whatever, but if we still have uh, the purpose of getting an IPv6 only internet, it's very difficult to me to believe that uh, the IPv4 market we, will help us with that. I've heard some very complex arguments on the counter, but I still, but I'm not convinced. In the last year, IPv6.br completed 10 years. IPv6.br is the name of the set of NIC.br initiatives and projects to foster IPv6 deployment in Brazil. And we had a special technical conference to celebrate the anniversary. And in this conference, we organized a panel called IPv6 Deployment Challenges and IPv4 Shutdown. It was supposed to be just a tease, a provocation. We did not really expect that the speakers invited would have anything to say about IPv4 sunset. But we were wrong. One of the speakers 
that was from one of the biggest ISPs and telecom operators in Brazil, had a very solid and detailed plan of how uh, would be how uh, its network would be evolving, how would be the evolving steps of its networks uh, from the current state of dual stack to a future IPv6 only. I was very surprised, I was very impressed. But should I be impressed? Probably no. All network operators should be doing this kind of planning. So bringing, bringing this theme to IGF is not other provocation, it's a call for action. We are talking about one net. Then we, have must, we must have one vision. We must have one vision, one shared vision about how our internet will evolve technically. Are we still going to an IPv6 only internet? Can we agree with that, that we are on a transition to IPv6 and not simply on an IPv6 deployment? If so, then someday we will have an IPv4 sunset. IPv4 will be turned off in the internet. So why do we create efforts that could lead in other direction, such as the IPv4 market? So why we are not discussing strategies for IPv4 sunset? There are so many questions we could be asking and answering in the way to the IPv4 sunset. Why IPv6 is not yet deployed? It is still lack of support in equipment. It is still lack of knowledge or understanding. Should it be enforced, enforced by laws or regulations? Should we have a coordinated shutdown, for example, a specific date or a specific condition? What the steps to do it without break anything on the internet? I don't know the answers. I'm not even sure about the questions. But we should start talking about this, and it's why we are here, and it's why we organized this workshop. So thank you, obrigado, thank. Thank you, Mr. Moreiras. That was very interesting. Now, Mr. Soucy from the French government will speak. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Sami Soucy. I work at RCEP, which is the French telecom regulator. And I work at the Open Internet Unit. And one of our missions is to accelerate the transition in France. So if we can start the presentation. OK. So, uh, as you can see, and it's not a surprise, Europe is currently experiencing a shortage of IPv4 addresses. It's not a surprise, it's not the RIP NCC that would say the opposite. So, uh, but don't worry, the internet won't break and it won't stop functioning, but if you care about internet <coughs> growth, you should start worrying. So, uh, like here, uh, most of the actors are thinking about keeping IPv4, and here I mention why keeping IPv4 is not a good idea. The options to keep IPv4 scalable are mainly two. It's either we buy IPv4 on a grey market or we rent IPv4, or we use a carrier grey night to share IPv4 addresses between several customers. Both options may be harmful because for buying IPv4, and here I'm mentioning examples that we are facing in France. Uh, for buying IPv4, uh, we see like there are certain services are being blocked, the video streaming banking services, due to a temporary wrong geolocation when IPv4 addresses are required. For example, when we acquire IPv4 that geolocated in uh, Latin America or in other places, and then we use them in France, those services may be blocked temporarily, and it can be like uh, uh, damaging for end user and for the operators that acquired uh, those IPv4. It's also uh, creating potentially a sizable barrier 
uh, for new entrants and small actors due to the increase of price of IPv4. Now uh, an IPv4 costs more than $20. And sometimes uh, players prefer buying IPv4 in, uh, instead of uh, uh, deploying IPv6 uh, that is free. Uh, one uh, other reason uh, that uh, buying IPv4 may be harmful, it increases the risk of seeing an internet split in two at a certain time. For example, when we have small actors that would be obliged to have IPv6 only hosting, and then, then they won't be uh, able to be accessed by uh, endpoints that are IPv4 only. For the second option, which is using CGNs, First, it prevents certain types of internet services, for example, controlling smart home systems, online gaming, from functioning properly. <coughs> uh, and we see this mainly with many gamers that are, that are alerting about the fact that if they are behind the CGN, they won't access all their ports. Thus, they won't be able to play, to their, uh, play their favorite game. Second, uh, it makes it difficult to identify suspects in juridictional investigations like terrorism, cyber pedopornography. That's why, like Europol, are interested in promoting IPv6 in order to help them detect those uh, kind of communication and people that are uh, interacting within like uh, pedopornographic forums and their level of detection is very low due to the CGNs. And the uh, third thing is the, the blast, uh, blacklisting issues. If one address behind the CGN is blacklisted uh, for, uh, from uh, a certain service, for example, banking service due to security reasons, it may lead to blacklisting of all machines that are behind the CGN. And like why, uh, as we see those issues, as a regulator, we think that uh, there is only one option that uh, needs to be done, is to accelerate this transition in order to guarantee the openness and the growth of internet and avoiding the issues of IPv4. So uh, now I will be speaking mainly about uh, the work that we are doing actually in order to promote IPv6 in France, either through uh, publishing a barometer and increasing transparency about this transition or federating the community in a multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, but uh, before, uh, let's talk about uh, the transition on itself. Like uh, uh, when we went from NCP to IPv4, it happened in one day. This is not possible with IPv6 because of the complexity and the size of internet today. So uh, like uh, we started the transition in 2003, but now we're still at the beginning of the cohabitation phase. And uh, that's why like we need to generalize the deployment of IPv4 uh, with uh, IPv6 with IPv4 in all parts of internet value chains in order to start to speak about IPv4 finding out and a real transition. So we're still at the beginning, even if like we're more than 15 years after, and it's like kind of alarming. And as you can see in this figure that I don't see that well because it's far, we show uh, the different state of the transition of the different stakeholders in France. And as we can see, there are like some bottlenecks, which are like mobile operators, uh, hosting providers and caps, uh, and uh, information system for uh, enterprise and administrations, but also uh, IoT. So let's start by speaking about our barometer. I will go briefly. It's uh, a report uh, of uh, 30 pages that you can find online uh, at our SEP website, but I will uh, uh, bring some highlights here in order not to spend too much time talking about it. And uh, we collect information directly from operators and uh, also AFNIC, which is uh, uh, which. Uh, uh, manage the CCTLD of France that provides us information also about the hosting part. So what we do here is what we call data-driven regulation. And in other term, it's name and shame or name and shine, depending on where you are on the podium. And as you can see, like we have like two operators, uh, Free and Orange, that are like more than almost 70% of clients that are activated. Uh, here we are at the, the fixed network. And uh, something to mention that uh, is interesting is like uh, for free, for example, they installed the new firmware on the vast majority of their boxes in May 2019. 
and they removed the ability of deactivating IPv6, which significantly increases the use of IPv6 in France, and like we encourage this kind of uh, uh, approach. And here, the four, uh, the four main operators on their fixed uh, line uh, network, sorry, they have provided forecasts of the, for the percentage of customers that are IPv6 uh, enabled. And uh, as you can see, for some operators, uh, the evolution does not answer much to the IPv4 uh, shortage. And this year, uh, in order to improve our monitoring, we uh, uh, enlarged the, the scope of uh, the gathering uh, to add operators that have uh, between 5,000 and 3 million uh, of customers. And as you can see, we only have like four operators uh, that are, uh, uh, sorry, three operators <laughs> that are doing IPv6 today in, uh, for small operators that are Coriolis, Canet, and OVH. And even though Europe is currently experiencing this shortage, like some operators still have no plan to deploy IPv6 on fixed network, which is like, as I said before, it seems problematic. Now, if we focus on uh, mobile, here we tried to divide by APN. We did, did Android, Android tethering, uh, uh, data only, and iPhone. And then, and as you can see, we only have like two operators that are starting uh, activating IPv6, mainly on uh, Android, and, uh, and for uh, iPhone, it started like uh, in September 2019. It doesn't mention it here because the figures are of uh, the month of uh, June. So uh, we have uh, Buick Telecom and Orange that made a remarkable push on iPhone in September 2019 with 68% uh, and 30% of IPv6 ready at the end of uh, October. And uh, they provide us also uh, the forecast and uh, same thing for for uh, the um, uh, uh, operators between 5,000 and 3 million. And as you can see, even more uh, uh, than on the fixed lines, the pace on mobile network future deployment is very likely to slow down the transition. And in order to better orient the, uh, the customer, uh, we added the, in our barometer the devices that are IPv6 enabled per default by the operators. In, in their last software update. So uh, the list is uh, available on our barometers. And so, uh, something to add also on the mobile part, mainly uh, to speak about 5G. In uh, the last procedure for awarding licenses to use frequencies in the 3.4, 3.8 gigahertz band in metropolitan France, uh, which would be used for 5G, uh, we added the sentence that the license holder must make its mobile network compatible with the IPv6 protocol by uh, the 31st of December 2020. And uh, the goal is mainly to ensure the interoperability of service and not slow down uh, the, the use of service available only on IPv6. So, uh, like, through this window of uh, frequency attribution, we added the obligation of IPv6 compatibility, which uh, if we say it's for the 5G APN, it will be also for 4G and 3G, so it will increase significantly the compatibility on mobile network. So if we uh, go to the hosting uh, services, which are one of the main bottlenecks in France, uh, it continues to, to, be, uh, to have like a slow pace of transition. And as you can see, tw only 27% of the top uh, 730 of websites visited in France are IPv6 uh, enabled. And uh, if we uh, see the most visited web pages, as Cisco uh, mentions uh, through Alexa top uh, 730, uh, this uh, number grows to 62% which shows that it's mainly the, uh, the bigger websites that are on IPv6. If we focus on the f French uh, top-level dom domain, we only have 15.5% uh, in IPv6, and as you see in the, the uh, this schema uh, at the top, the, the level of growth is quite slow. 
and uh, what we wanted also is to do some uh, name and shame uh, for uh, hosting providers. And as you can see, there is only one and one EONOS that has like seven, uh, more than 75% of IPv6 enabled website and all the others of top 10 uh, for uh, French top level domains have less than 10%. And in the barometer, we, uh, we put figures for the top, tw uh, top 30. Same thing for uh, mail hosting, that uh, like, uh, probably uh, it's even slower than web hosting. And uh, the situation is qu cloud, uh, quite alarming with only 5.8% uh, in IPv6 for MX. And, uh, and this lag uh, and this slow pace of the transition of this section of internet value could force IPv4 to be kept longer than uh, expected, which will uh, result in more costs, etc. So the transition, as uh, we said before, should be done on a different level and uh, in, a, like in a harmonized uh, way. And, uh, one more or less positive point is DNS infrastructure at, uh, with 78% uh, uh, activating IPv6 and with the same approach we differentiate uh, with the different hosts. So where does France stand? Like if we take a look at the figure, like uh, we started in 2003 and until 2016, th thanks to the deployment of free, we stayed at 5% of users. Then when Orange started deploying, we started growing and then there was some initiative from Week Telecom and Week Telecom at uh, the mobile level. And then as you see, uh, on May 2019, as I said before, uh, right after the, acti uh, the activation per default in f all three boxes of IPv6 and removing the ability of uh, removing the possibility of disabling IPv6, like uh, uh, France uh, uh, percentage of uh, users uh, grew to 36 percent today. And uh, then in the barometer, we compare also the, those different statistics, uh, either use or content and uh, transit providers with uh, different countries. And uh, even if the situation is uh, not that great, but we try to find positive things, like France today is like in the first position in Europe after uh, Belgium, Germany, and uh, Greece. And, uh, but uh, it's not uh, ranking between countries. It's uh, even the first countries is at more or less 50%, which is not necessarily enough. And I think that everyone in this room is agreeing with me. So we need to accelerate and do more things. And now I will talk about uh, our IPv6 task force in France the, to finish my presentation. And in this uh, task force, we try to gather all stakeholders in France in order to accelerate and fluidify the transition in France. So, ta -ta -ta, I don't see the slide there. Okay, uh, so uh, what happened uh, in 2016 is that we gave a report to the government about the deployment in France. And uh, we proposed different number of actions. One of the actions was to setting up a barometer, but another action was to set up appropriate place for discussion. That's why last year we did the IP Love 6 workshop and we had like several problems raised explaining the delay of the transition to IPv6, like lack of training, uh, uh, quality of service issues, security issues, etc. Uh, you can find the summaries uh, available on our SEP website, but also there were suggested courses of actions in order to accelerate. And that's why we, uh, we set up an IPv6 task force that was launched uh, two weeks ago. This task force is in partnership with Internet Society. We involve different stakeholders. We have ISPs, uh, uh, big ISPs, small ISPs, hosting providers, IXPs, public administration companies, equipment suppliers. And it's important for us to gather different stakeholders that are involved in this transition. And the objective as I said before, is to accelerate the transition through one, facilitating information and best practices sharing between different stakeholders, and two, working on concrete deliverables to help different actors in their transition. And in addition to physical meeting, also, uh, there is a project to put an online platform in order to uh, synchronize the work and to prepare the different deliverables between the different stakeholders. And it's not 
RCEP or Telecom uh, Regulator or Internet Society Task Force. It's the community task force, so the priority of action to be implemented are defined in consultation with the community of participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Soussi. Now we will listen to Mr. Tamal from the African Technical Community. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to start my presentation by sharing a certain proverb we have in Africa. And it says that unless a man is willing to plant a seed, knowing full well that he'll never sit under its sheet, nor eat of its fruit, the village will never grow. Unless a man is willing to plant a seed, knowing that he'll never sit under its sheet, nor eat of its fruit, the village will never grow. I want you to have this in the back of your mind as I speak, because we're going to circle back to it at the end. So what does it take for us to accelerate IPv6 deployment? And I speak from the perspective of you could, if Constance is an admiral in the army, think of me as the intelligence officer <laughs> who's been on the battlefield, right? You know, more than 55 different countries, training more than 10,000 engineers. So I know that what it takes is just not more training because people like to say, oh, training, training. it's just not more training. In Afrin, for example, we've trained more than 10,000 people so I can pretty much guarantee that in every single network operator on the continent, we have at least four people that we've trained. And I'm not talking about one-day PowerPoint shows, hands-on training. We know that it's just not more conferences. We've got the IPv6 World Conferences in France. We've got the Business Summit in Zurich. We've got several sessions at the IGF. It's just not that. It is definitely not more government policies or mandates, which we know have failed spectacularly as the US government. It is definitely not more incentives, which don't exist for now. It is definitely not more another search for the elusive business case, which is the management, which is for me is the mother of all management excuses. Right. And definitely is just an, is not another wild goose chase of something we call killer applications. That's just plain lazy. Right. What it takes is decision makers who are willing to think beyond the short term, right? It's decision makers. Every single one of us works in a company. You know that engineers don't initiate change on a massive level. That's up to decision makers, right? So, the problem we know is the skill exists, right? We know that the engineers are motivated because they are always going to be the ones who are saying, you know what, um, I want to do this thing, or they have proof of concepts in all of their labs, but the thing that is required to scale it to company level is outside their circles of influence. That's up to the decision makers, right? We know that it's not a lack of, you know, other operators to emulate, from Liquid Telecom in Africa to Reliance Geo to Free in France to T-Mobile. There's lots and lots of different companies in every sector that have taken the plunge and have demonstrated that it can be done. The problem is simply that too many managers, too many executives, CTOs, CIOs, do not, do not have the vision and are not willing to back the engineers to embark on IPv6 deployment projects. And because we know the number one reason for project failure in every kind of organization is what? Lack of management support. Because management support or executive support unlocks a trinity of things without which any project is doomed from the beginning. The first one is time. Engineers need time to work on IPv6 deployment projects at scale. Who controls the time? The decision makers. The second one is money. So if you're in Africa, you get training for free, but Afrinic isn't going to buy or replace equipment for you. 
or even if Afni is going to provide free training, you still need to sponsor yourself, you know, flights and hotels. All of that money is controlled. The purse strings is controlled by the decision makers. And sometimes you might need to change equipment. And then finally, this is something we've seen in several of our workshops. Two weeks later, some attendee would tell us, hey, I've gone back, you know, I've deployed IPv6, I've got a prefix down. Um, the one we asked them, why haven't you pushed it to the customers? They say, that is, you know, it, re it requires more resources and I don't have the authorization to pursue that on my own. Right. So these are the three things that executive support, which can only come from decision makers, unlocks time, money, and other people to work on the project. So I think we all know here, it's just not a matter of debate that IPv4 is ill-suited to the continued growth of the internet. So we know that IPv6, like a tree, is guaranteed to be good for the internet. And what's good for the internet is good for business. So the same exhortation to the African elder I mentioned at the beginning also applies to the decision makers that until decision makers are willing to back projects whose benefits to the organizations are realizable in the next quarter or sometimes the next semester, only then can technology that we've outgrown, like IPv4, begin to wither, and only then can IPv6 get a chance to solve. And this perspective is what informs our strategy at Afrinic. Right. So we're going beyond training, we're focusing on helping managers and policymakers understand the strategic impacts through action-oriented workshops. We call them hackathons, IPv6 action plan hackathons for governments, or deployathons, which is something we created for engineers. The idea is to shorten the time between learning and deploying from, say, six months or six years in some cases to, what, five days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tamon. So now we're going to hear our remote panelist, Mr. Legree, from Moroccan Civil Society, from the Moroccan Civil Society. Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. You heard me? Yes. Good morning. Good morning uh, for everyone. I, I am uh, Sharqawi El Gris uh, from Morocco. Uh, I am a member of uh, Moroccan Internet Society, uh, the ISOC chapter in Morocco. I am also uh, a member of uh, Task Force uh, in IPv6 in Morocco. And uh, I am also IT professor at the University of Casablanca. Uh, so, sorry, I, I am surprised to hear that uh, in IGF uh, there is no IPv6. I think that uh, this meeting uh, will be uh, the first uh, to encourage uh, the IPv6 uh, initiative. Uh, I hope that the, the next uh, meeting uh, can take this uh, point uh, of in, uh, importance. So, uh, when we uh, speak about IPv6 IPv uh, and the old version IPv4, I think uh, there is no choice to move uh, to IPv6. We have a good issues. We have a IPv4 press exhaustion. This is a big uh, issue uh, that uh, should uh, impose uh, the, 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 the movement, the, the transition in, uh, in IPv6. Uh, so, uh, the, 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 the important question uh, what is the ideal time to, to stop IPv4? IPv4? I think that uh, uh, we should have a new services uh, 
Uh, we are uh, waiting to the, the, the 5G ones, for example, the IPTV, uh, the, the, the future services, uh, which uh, impose uh, to, 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 to be connected uh, in IPv6. I think that uh, the, the, the most important is the, to have the new services just with IPv6. Also, uh, I think that uh, the, the arrival of uh, IoT with uh, several thousand uh, of uh, objects uh, to be connected in uh, in internet uh, should be uh, also uh, a most uh, reason to uh, to to make stop uh, IPv4 because uh, we could not uh, address uh, all objects uh, in the future internet. So uh, now, how we uh, how do we prepare technically? I think that uh, the first uh, thing to to signal is there is there is no a fixed die. There is no uh, predefined days to 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 move to IPv6. IPv6 is a, a big project. Is not a update of IPv4. We uh, we should uh, take a big time to to pass to to to, to move uh, to IPv6. Uh, the all uh, stakeholders in every country uh, should uh, work together to to succeed this big project. For example, uh, all government in every time, in every country, should take uh, action plans with the deadline, with the, the, the defined action, with the, the everyone, the every other stakeholders to, uh, to migrate to IPv6. Also, in the ISP side, in the operator side, they should uh, initiate the IPv6, the new IPv6 services. Uh, uh, waiting the, the users, waiting the need users is not a good uh, idea. We should to initiate the need in the users. We should create a new services to uh, invite users after to, uh, to use IPv6 services. Uh, in the academic side, I think that uh, we should initiate uh, a lot of session uh, to have more skills in the IPv6, in IPv6 users. We, uh, we have more training. We have more uh, academic uh, modules in university in, uh, in training uh, organization. In the community te te technical, uh, I uh, I propose also to have uh, a more infrastructure in IPv6, a more technology in IPv6, a more equipment. Uh, with IPv6 in the, in the internet infrastructure. Uh, no, now the, 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 the plane to the transition. I, uh, I think that the, this, uh, this project, uh, we will have more time to this transition. We, will take, we should take in more time to this transition. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, uh, is a long and a big project. We uh, should work together to uh, succeed this project. Uh, another point is uh, we should to have uh, a more uh, consensus. We should to realize a more consensus with the, uh, all the stakeholders in every in, the, in each country. Uh, and we should to, to work together to to to, to, to go uh, to go ahead in IPv6, and also we should to satisfy all IPv6 needs in infrastructure, in uh, users, in the services, uh, and so on. Uh, in Morocco, we uh, I I salute the, the initiative uh, to make a project. Uh, to plan the migration IPv6 uh, 
three, four years ago, uh, with a study uh, with all uh, operators in Morocco and uh, all actors, civil society, uh, technical community, academic, and uh, so on. Uh, this study will uh, will uh, uh, go with the to specify our needs all needs in IPv6 and to to uh, to give uh, more idea or to to plan the migration in the in the, in our country. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Legree. Unfortunately, we had a problem with the other remote panelists, really Howard. So let's start our open microphone session. So are there any comments from the audience, the speakers? Please. Um, <clears throat> Rajesh Charya from India. Uh, till yesterday, I was knowing that we are the largest percentage-wise of IPv6 deployment in India. But yesterday I was updated that in percentage, Germany is way, way ahead to India. But in the user-wise, India is the largest user base of IPv6 deployment. We can say that India is having around 65% rural user base. And the paying capacity of that rural person is very low. That's the reason the lifeline of the equipment which is being installed in anywhere into the country on account of broadband or mobile phone, the lifeline is very large. And in those phones, <clears throat> still IPv4 is working, IPv6 is not working. They cannot replace the equipment just to take the IPv6. That's one of the major challenge why <clears throat> we are right now limited to the user who are buying the new equipment. Secondly, the technical guy of corporates are not so encouraged. The major problem what they are facing is that the address is so long that they cannot remember. Like what if they are simply remembering IPv4. They cannot remember the IPv6. And they have to ch change the equipment of the corporate network, as well as their skill capacity, they want to use what they have. They don't want to use into the new. While a lot of uh, trainings, a lot of workshops has been done by ISP Association to WIM, to which I am heading. But some discouragement is there till the time the IPv4 is not getting completely exhausted and they have not left out to just to switch to IPv6 finally. Otherwise, till that time, it will work. For the startup, they require a small pool of slash 23 minimum. Because as far as I remember in 2008, I moved the proposal into the APNIC for reducing the allocation size from slash 21 to slash 22. And around 2008, when the IPv4 exhaustion or IPv6 were just into the discussion, not in the serious talks. But still, the WhatsApp people are requiring a small pool to start up and to create the network and to understand the thing. So I, what I will say, you no know, doubtly, we are welcoming the IPv6. We are deploying the I, IPv6. But at the same time, rest in peace, IPv4, I doubt. So thank you very much for sharing that perspective. Uh, I just want to answer to one specific part about the concern of the network engineers and the length of the addresses. To make you understand this point, I want you to think about the world of a typist. The first time he stopped using a typewriter and got a computer. For so long as she kept or he kept using the mentality of a typewriter on a computer, she was never going to be getting value out of a computer. 
exact same thing happened here. And I think it's important that the people who do training understand that we're just not trying to, you know, take every single bad habit that they've learned because lots of engineers all over the world have learned some terribly bad habits around IPv4, right? And every smart engineer I know understands that the half-life of your knowledge in IT is two years, which means if you don't learn new skills, you don't upgrade your skills in two years, you become irrelevant. The exact same thing applies to IPv6. Now, specifically to the length, one of the things we do um, at Afrinic is this, and we, we've demonstrated this over and over in deployer terms. That, you know, the length of an IP address being 120 bit, that's a $5 problem. Using an IP address management system and DNS as basic skills for a network engineer, that's a $5,000 problem. Please don't solve $5 problems. Uh, you have answered to my, your own question and to my question, smart technician. The, some technicians who work as usual into the general way don't want to change. But the smart who really think of development and who really want to deploy the new technology into the network, they will definitely change and they are changing. That's the issue that few, few peer engineers who are not so smart, they just think ki whatsoever is going, let, it, let them go. They work according to that. That's the problem. At that time, the management of that corporate has to come forward. Ki why not deploy the new equipment and why not deploy the new technology into the network for the betterment? And we are encouraging, we are now directly talking to the corporate head for deploying the IPv6 into their network when the service providers are not allocating further IPv4 to their demand, then automatically they are changing to IPv6. I, I'd like to comment about the equipments. Uh, because in the point of view of uh, ISPs or the companies, it's uh, really easy to solve because the equipments have obsolescence. So, uh, ISPs all the time come to us and say, well, I have a network and all our CPEs don't have IPv6 support. What can I do? It's very expensive to exchange out this equipment. So forget, forget it. Forget your current network. Forget your current equipment. The equipment will be on obsolescence. Uh, in five years, in ten years maximum, then you change it because of other reasons. You have to you have to worry about the new networks. The, ISP, the ISPs are growing, are connecting new people. So uh, let's not do new networks with IPv4 only. Let's do all the new networks, all the new implementations with IPv6. We, we started to, to do it in 1998. If we, we had uh, done it, it would be already solved. It's not. So it's simple. Uh, just I'm correcting, all the ISPs in India are IPv6 capable and their network is IPv6 enabled. They are giving the IPv6 network to their customer. It is the discouragement from the customer side ki that the customers are not accepting IPv6 immediately till the time their requirement is not increasing. Like I have given the pool of slash 24 to one of my customer. The moment he will be demanding slash 23, I will regret him and saying that you have to come to the IPv6 and I will give you as number of as IPv6 to you for your network. Then they are changing. But till the time their network is small and their requirement is small, they are not so encouraged to change the network. I'll, all the service provider are there. One more problem is there. The wish of the government should also come forward. The moment they will make mandatory that all the payment gateway, all the bank, railway, airlines has to be IPv6, drastically there will be a change 
into the network ki that the user when the user will not be able to access through ipv4 so they have for they have to forcefully change to ipv6 so it is the um, government initiatives that should come by mandating them ki that all this application will be on ipv6 only not ipv4 because still lot of banks and payment gateways are there who are accepting ipv4 okay so within africa there are at least 15 governments that have gone down the route of mandates and just like the us government they failed spectacularly that's because government has two weapons in its toolkit this regulation and mandates but the only the other one that i don't think that most governments understand is the power of the economic incentive let me finish if there's one thing every operator will tell you the government is not a stakeholder of my network do not tell me the government does not help pay customers the government does not buy me equipment the government cannot tell me what is in my commercial best interest however the government i think this is something we are trying to get more governments in africa to do in almost every country government is a huge buyer of ict services so maybe governments could consider using the power of incentives because here's what you find these same governments that go deploy ipv6 deploy ipv6 they themselves don't have ipv6 on their network and so that brings a problem of credibility why are you trying to get me to put a mandate to deploy a technology that you yourself are not doing so i mean or if you find an example in the world where mandates have worked i'll be glad to know but i can guarantee you all those that have tried have maybe it's time to try something else and the power of the economic incentive because imagine what would happen if the indian government rather than saying x date we are going to uh, banks should do what if the indian government said in 5 years time any contractor who does not have full support for ipv6 will not get an indian government contract you are not forcing anyone you are going to make people to do the writing for themselves i think that might be more effective and cost a lot less rancor we have to understand one thing in india the literacy level is very low and the new user base who is coming from the rural side is the no doubtly illiterate in education but digitally literate in democratic style of india the, our government cannot force one more thing we have to understand the politicians who are running the government are not at all a technology guy they don't understand and they don't want to compel anything so that politically they are into the bad name please miss bear yes um you are all right but it's not fault and it's not right for for our perspective um we have an interest interest to guarantee um national sovereignty therefore we are going to run our own network infrastructures so we are not just a buyer for uh, it uh, we are running it ourselves and therefore we are interested in to implement ipv6 um the problem is we are a federal state and after constitutional rights the countries and municipalities are um can do after the constitution their own decision and what we can do we can um um bring in knowledge and training and convince um them to integrate ipv6 and we can have that discussion um to implement ipv6 it not just running ipv6 that's a question of implementing new structures um the chance of having um new ideas and new um more transparency um to bring in more national sovereignty all these facts are more political than just implementing and buying um one infrastructure element or a device or to order a new provider um these are more um features that's our point of view Uh, just to add uh, several points to start with the compatibility issue etc we don't care about compatibility we care about activation and we don't wait for clients to ask for activation 
we, uh, activation like uh, in our perception should be done by operators or hosting providers. Uh, that's uh, the first We've already done. Sorry? We are fully, uh, all the service providers are compatible and giving <coughs> the services in IPv6. Yeah, Even their the, own Knox network is running on IPv6 and the customers who are demanding, they are, well, the new customers who are coming to the network, they are going to the IPv6 only. Yeah. We are only much concerned with the few old customers who are not changing. Until the time they will not You're change. You're speaking about mobile network, mobile network, mobile network, fixed network. Huh, mobile network. Okay. Around the uh, uh, Reliance Geo is 100% uh, IPv6, okay. and the Vodafone and the Airtel is now almost 70 to 80% is okay. the mo IPv6 network. Uh, but in general, it will be just a matter of time that I'm, uh, those uh, devices won't be, no longer no. be in the network. Only so. the rural portion yeah. of the country who are uh, not yeah. buying, they are buying the refurbished equipment. Yeah. By default, they have to go with the IPv4. Yeah, but, uh, and the I service provider cannot overlook those customers in the present time when we are struggling for the ARPU. And uh, to come to the second part of uh, coercive approach, oblige uh, the, this transition, or even adding some uh, incentives, etc. In general, like uh, incentives, may be nice to have, but it's not like mandatory uh, in order to at least do 90% of the transition. It's more the, the end of the transition where maybe uh, this coercive or this uh, incentive may lead to finish the transition. But in general, for example, as uh, I take the example of France, because that's what we're doing, we, uh, other than what we did for 5G where we asked for compatibility, uh, what we're doing is uh, data-driven regulation. We're sh have, uh, showing uh, transparency about what actors are, one. Second, we're talking to them to sh show to every stakeholder where is the entrance uh, of transiting. And by talking, there is like a psychological thing where people are afraid of something they don't know yet. Let's put it this way. And it can be directly linked to the training issues and the fact that uh, they, uh, as soon as they are reassured about the uh, quality of service issues, security issues, how they should handle that and that aspect, filtering aspect, etc., it may lead like uh, those operators to put up in place their uh, transition. Compare the size of the population base of the user base of the country, mm -hmm. changing all the user and the size of the population will always be a challenge for implementing anything to that country. So, okay, so I've, I've heard a similar argument quite a lot through our continent as well. And I think this is one of the mistakes that decision makers and policy makers, we have to deploy IPv6. It is completely different from we must get IPv6 to every single citizen on the same day, right? Every project manager understands the importance of a phased approach. Phase one could simply be, let us get IPv6 in government infrastructure for the next two years. No operator needs to deploy IPv6 every single part. You could do your data center while leaving broadband. You could do mobile network while leaving the fixed network. It happens today. So, Quite frankly, I, my experience has been that most of the managers who say, oh, I can't do it because every single device on my network is not ready, every single user is just looking for an excuse. People who want to do it will find something that you can do. It's a small wins, it's a small wins, rather than thinking that you can do every single thing everywhere at the same time. For me, that's the mother of all excuses. So let's find something that we can do. It is possible to find that in every single case. I think Mr. Legree wants to say something. Mr. Legree? <laughs> Mr. Le uh, uh, hi. Uh, I, I want to uh, to thank Yukon, uh, he's a great expert in IPv6 in Africa and helps uh, everyone for, for us uh, to, to develop more skills in IPv6. Uh, 
in my point of view, uh, government uh, do not have the task in, uh, in IPv6 implementation. Uh, but the operator have it. The operator to, uh, says that uh, they have IPv6, but there is not uh, a lot of need uh, in user side. I think that uh, a old uh, logic because the operators uh, should create the need in users. The operator expect that uh, users should request IPv6 services. Uh, in a logical, uh, uh, in a purely commercial logic, uh, the, com the, the, the user nowadays is waiting to, to propose uh, for, uh, for him the new services. And the operator uh, should push uh, in this orientation to implement and propose the new service in IPv6. Uh, I think that finally uh, it, it's clear that if the operators uh, want it, we uh, should have uh, the new services and the uh, implementation uh, uh, begins uh, tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. We don't have more time to debate. So to conclude our session, again, I would like to thank you all for coming. When we proposed this discussion, we didn't expect to set a specific date for this transition. But we wanted to raise awareness of all the problems that we might have if we don't start to plan to think about this transition. So as you can see from all the panelists' speech, there is a lot of work to be done. We hope you have enjoyed. We hope to meet you again next year. Thank you. Rest in peace, happy before. <laughs>